This doesn't line up. I'm sitting here reading about how much Hashem loves me and how much I'm meant to be good to everybody and, and think positively and act nicely and I'm listening to... Shoot this guy, <laughs> shoot that guy, sell the drugs. <laughs> I had what you talked about earlier, a little bit of like that, that gaiva of like, there's a way and there's, it needs to be like this and I don't do that and I don't, I can't be like that. That flame of like, you know, ballet chuva, like syndrome of like, uh, <laughs> I'm on fire and, and everything needs to be perfect and you guys are wrong. And yeah, you're so all I, evil and I'm good. I, I'm on the right path. You're all wrong. So yeah. I had that for a little bit, even though I was completely, completely wrong. Not only to think that I wasn't even on those levels that I thought I was on. It was all false um, pride, whatever it is. So, like, if any of the hindering, it came from my side, because you know, then it comes up like, oh, this is what they're teaching. You. These are what your rabbis are teaching you. And this is yeah. how the Torah teaches you to act, and obviously not. But like, and later we learn the real way to bring people closer is not by forcing them or telling them to do things. It's the opposite, just being Personal a good example. example. Yeah, exactly. And like what you said about the midos, like that's the main tshuva. I saw this yeah. video. You see the this documentary about Ot Nivgash. Ot Nipagesh. Uh, yeah, Ot yeah, Nipagesh. yeah, you told me about this. It's so when this song. guy went to Uman, and then later he went because his brother was observant, and they're twins, and he they had like a fight. They didn't get along so much, and he went to Rav uh, Shalom Arush, and Rav oh, yeah. Shalom Arush said like, "Tell him like this is the real tshuva, like connecting again, like connecting and like." The part of Avtal Reach Kamocha, it's like the the lev, the lev of the Tanya, the lev of the Torah, talks about Avtal Reach That's the what main thing. What tips do you have? What tips do you have for a person that's like now making chufa and they have to deal with their family? Maybe they still live at home and their family doesn't keep kosher. They're not keeping mitzvot, and they that's where they have to be for right now. So how how like what can they do maybe to I, I think to better that relationship? I think they should start with understanding, because people when they do chufa they immediately. Like they're like you say we're we're saying like they're in the lights then the road they're like they're the truth and they're wrong but whoa hold on guy you were there two minutes ago <laughs> like you're not any better you just got there now maybe a bit earlier than they do but at a certain point they're gonna get there too but like again like you got there not by someone like forcing you and telling you and like telling you, you should do the mitzvah you should go to shul come with me I mean. It's fine. You can offer to them, hey, you want to come with me to shul, but leave it at that. Yeah. Don't like force it on them and have understanding that you were there just two seconds ago and have patience because... Even if two seconds is two years, yeah. that's still two seconds. Yeah. Because <laughs> the whole point we're here is we have to get there on our own. We don't want anyone else to tell us that we want to do it ourselves. This is the seventh generation. We're the last generation to Mashiach. And it's Shivivim Chavim. Shivim Chavim, seventh are cherished because of the first. The first is Avram Avinu. From the Mimer, Rabbi Mimer talks about this in, the, I think, Basilegani it is. And what's so special about that? That the first one, Avram Avinu, he discovered Hashem himself. And the same with now. And he proclaimed it to the world. But also, with love. But also at the same time, he discovered it himself. So you want to proclaim it to the world. But you want to also allow other people to discover it, just to discover it themselves. And anything that's forced is most likely not going to be good. It's not yeah. going to be. Uh, Whenever has that it's not going to be real and not not so deep. Um, it's really interesting though. Like also like, you know, work and and friends. Things change. The it, it changes. It's like, you well, also what you want and what you're interested in changes. The way you have conversations, what you want to talk about, all of that changes when you start to be more conscious of Torah and mitzvot and Hashem in your life. Um, all of a sudden, you can't look like for music. I don't know what your music story was, but for me, like not great. <laughs> <laughs> I I grew up listening to hip hop. Yeah, like, same. The craziest, most gangster, <laughs> vile, nasty, vulgar music, and but now we have good uh, rappers like yeah, the Chaim Oji. Shout out to <laughs> shout out to Zacharia. Shout out to Nisim Black. Yes. Um, Shoddy got Doritos. <laughs> or as my wife says, Shoddy got Doritos. Ooh. But anyway, so <laughs> for me, for music, like for, uh, hip hop was what I ate during the day. Like uh, anyone that knows me from high school or middle school, I had headphones in my head all day long and I was listening to music all day long. And for me, it was like a process. It's just like, I can't listen to this anymore. This doesn't line up. I'm sitting here reading about how much Hashem loves me and how much I'm meant to be good to everybody and, and think positively and act nicely and I'm listening to... Shoot this guy, <laughs> shoot that guy, sell the drugs. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't add up. So like at a certain point, and then I came to, I came to Tzfat and I was actually the chief rabbi here, Rabbi Shmuel Eliyahu, 
um, he was talking on, on Yom Kippur, and he said randomly in the middle of a drasha, in the middle of his talk on Yom Kippur, he's like, you can't listen to this and this music. It's really bad for your neshama. You have to pay attention to who's making the music that you listen to and, and where it's coming from, what were their intentions, how, how serious and how, how much did they want to bring you to Hashem by making this song. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, I can't do this anymore. It's Yom Kippur, right? And this like just went in. And it just went in like... At the right time. Exactly.